All right. Good evening and welcome to the Agricultural Commission, February 2022. Um, I call the uh, meeting to order at 7.07. And oh, I do have um, to read, I have to read the ditty for the COVID. So, and it's not going to override my screen. Oh, there it is. Okay, the town of Lunenburg, in response to the COVID-19 coronavirus is currently following the guidance from the Lunenburg Board of Health, Massachusetts Department of Public Health and the CDC regarding the virus and steps communities can take to prevent the spread and all town facilities are currently closed to the public. In accordance with the governor's order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, all public meetings are being conducted remotely. Uh, not all, but some, this, this one tonight. <laughs> this meeting will may be able to be found on the Lunenburg Access, will be able to be found on the Lunenburg Access YouTube channel within 24 hours after the meeting. All information is also provided for members of the public that would like to participate in the meeting remotely. Uh, web links are not gonna help you, but uh, from a phone, you can dial the, num the toll-free number 888-475-4499 and enter message ID, um, it, doesn't matter. I don't think we're being Zoomed or broadcast. So if you're here, you can join. And if you're not, then you can watch it on YouTube. <laughs> so we have called to order. Um, we have uh, myself and Mr. Stober and uh, Kira is filling in as an alternate. So we have our quorum and uh, public comment open discussion is our first item. Um, and now, so I've got farm complaints is number three. Does anybody have and an, an aware of any farm complaints? No. Oh, going back to the comments, did you guys get that MDAR? I know um, MDAR sent out the, about the birds. I know Kira. Oh, on it. The avian flu, yes. Kira. The avian flu. Yeah, uh, they've, well, they found some cases of avian influenza in a couple states, and there's some in New Hampshire, in Rockland County, which is Nashua is included. So it's pretty close, but, um, and it was found in Mallards, and migrating season is coming soon, although I think they're going to go north. So, um, but now is the time the state usually does testing for NPIP that you need to have in order to sell chicks. So I don't know if they're going to find more cases when they go around and do all their spring testing. Hmm. But right. as of right now, they're not saying to do anything particular with your like backyard chickens. I read it and yeah. it said something about trying to keep them inside and uh, prevent them from having contact. Yeah, I mean, if you have wire, they're, and they can come in contact with any bird. It's like dander and feathers and droppings. So it's kind of hard to keep wild birds away from domestic birds. Right. And, and dander's going to blow in the wind. Yeah. So um, I don't know. I do have the Department of Agriculture coming to the store to test the birds. The beginning of next month so i was going to talk to them see how serious they think it is oh okay cool so far i mean fish and wildlife yeah. hasn't said anything to me about wild animals so i don't know if they are doing anything either um they haven't mentioned it they haven't said not to take in wild birds yet Okay, rehabilitator, right? Yeah, yeah. I get agriculture and wildlife sent to me. So um, right now, it's been only been found near us in wild mallards. Um, they found some in Kentucky in like a turkey um, farm, like a a big one. But you can still eat meat that has avian influenza. You just have to cook it to temperature. It's not going to make you sick. You can kill all your chickens so i don't know I, as of right now no one seems to be making a big deal about it hopefully hopefully you can keep us updated as far as yeah. 
signed up from um, uh, from work. Thank yeah. You. Can right. do. Cool. Thank you. Um, is there anything else on that? Okay. Um, review and approve minutes. Uh, I I still don't have any for you, but I actually do have uh, October, November, September, October. I've got like seven sets of minutes that I did in the last week. Uh, I think that leaves me with probably seven more. So if you keep your eyes on your email, um, I can make hard copies available. Um, I can get them printed at the Ritter probably um, and deliver them if it need be. But we need to catch up on that. I, I am severely, severely behind and it's all my fault. Um, but again, I, I, I halfway caught up. So um, they'll be coming up. Um, so here we are to the farmer's market update. And I don't know if you want to wait for Shanina or if you want to give it to us or if you will have it in two parts. Either way, however you want. Well, I can just tell you what my thoughts are, I guess. Um, so given my situation, I, I really can't attend the market. Um, but I'm, as I mentioned to you earlier, um, I was certainly willing to help out with the recruiting of vendors and getting entertainment if that's something we're going to do, maintaining the spreadsheet and, you know, contacting people. It's just, I wouldn't be able to attend the market. Um, so I talked to Shanina. Well, I, I, we emailed back and forth last week. She said uh, she had intended on managing the market this year. So that's good. Um, I kind of told her what my plans would be, um, which kind of really depended on what her plans were. But she said she intended on running the market and um, in making some changes that she was working on, but she didn't elaborate on what that was. Uh, and she said she'd be here tonight. So I, yeah, I don't, I don't know why she's not here yet. Oh, give her time, she may come. And we need to, I mean, it, if we need approval of the application, those really need to go out pretty soon. So yeah. that would be next month would be the earliest if, if she doesn't get a chance to come on tonight, correct? There's nothing that could be approved. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw it out there for the other members um, is that part of the reason we were excited to have market managers that weren't members was that they could work kind of uh, separate. They, they had the ability to do the four Sundays in between our, in our monthly meetings. Um, and, and I'm wondering if we wouldn't want to um, extend that opportunity to at least post a digital application that that so we can get vendors to start plugging in and and they know that we're going to have it this year and if we need to we can review it at our next meeting and, and make changes but I, I personally would feel comfortable and i'm just one person so i wouldn't mind letting michael and or shanina uh put that together and, and make it available uh, i don't know how you guys feel about that no i'm good with that I'm good. Kira? Sorry, I'm trying to figure out how to hook headphones into my phone. I'm, I'm okay with that. Okay. So yeah, just just to get it out there. Um, I don't, we, we made, we only made a few changes. We, we, uh, we started a week later last year and we ended a half hour earlier. We cut the fees in half. Um, what else did we change last year? I don't think anything aside from the date. No, I think that that was it. The dates, um, there was a typo in there that we fixed, uh, but didn't have anything to change anything and, yeah, and, and cut the fees uh, significantly. That's right. Do you expect that there'll be any similar changes or any changes required at all aside from the dates? I have no idea. Um, what changes she was thinking of. Um, it could be bringing the fees back up. Um, we didn't do much around, we didn't pay for any entertainment last year. That might be something she might be interested in doing. Um, maybe something around rules. We had, we had played with the idea last year of maybe not having per diem vendors, but just having everyone um, year long because it was such a, a battle of trying to get people in finding locations and then not showing up and changing the dates. We have people changing the dates constantly. 
uh, and sometimes not telling us they were changing the dates. So I know we had talked about that, but nothing serious. Again, I, I don't know what um, she was thinking, but I'm sure uh, whatever it is, she put a lot of thought into it and um, just don't know what it is right now. Okay. Um, all right. So why don't we go ahead and, and we, we can come back to that uh, if when she shows up. Um, so that's the farmer's market update. Do you have anything else to anything? Else? No, I just um, can't really understand what happened the, at the end of the season last year. Things just dropped off. Yeah. And I, I talked, I talked to many other uh, market managers in different areas and they all reported the same things too. So I don't know if people are traveling more, but the numbers really dropped off. Did you just say that other markets had the same experience? Yeah. I talked to uh, three other communities and um, that are vendors and a couple of, of the market managers. And they said the same thing. Uh, people weren't coming out and, and they had a hard time recruiting vendors too. Wow. It was part of our problem. We had vendors just kind of dropping out too at the, the last three or four markets because yeah. the business was slow. That was a little disappointing. Yep. Um, so uh, on, on, on that note, uh, ayahuasca, the, um, the, the, the couple over uh, next to the building there the, with the, the supplements and the soaps, they have um, opened up their storefront. Uh, they're, on, they're, uh, they're in Fitchburg, uh, first floor on, um, I think it's Summer Street, I'm not sure. So Lunenburg Street comes into Main Street. Is it Main Street west, east of that? Because I know it's Summer Street in Lunenburg. Is it still Summer Street in Fitchburg? Anyways, they're over there. Um, okay, that's great. I didn't know they that's they were shooting for. That's great. Yeah, yeah, and I I did talk to them. They they're kind of up in the air if they're gonna if they're gonna bend or not. Um, I did have a um. We we had talked for two years about it would be great to get a seafood person. And I had somebody out of the blue contact me that they want to. Um, they're a new company. And they'd like to sell seafood at the market. So really? get there. Yeah, that'd be kind of neat. Well, we'll have to, that'll be a challenge for the Board of Health. <laughs> yes, uh, we already talked about that, but. Good. Um, so, I mean, I'd love to have you stay. If, or if, you, if you're pressed for time, Michael, you're, you're, you're welcome to, to take off, however you feel. I'll hang for a bit, see what's going on. Um, and then I'll just drop off. So don't, don't feel offended when I just disappear. <laughs> hey, can you send Shanina a text? You know, my, my phone's dead. I'm going to go get my charger and um, okay. I'll wait till it boots up and then I will. Okay. Let me go. I'll, go get, I'll go get that now. Thank you. Um, so those are the first five. Now we're into new business. So new business, first item is a new talent bank form has been received. And uh, this new fellow here, Thomas's iPad, this is Thomas Jordan. He submitted a uh, talent bank form. And um, he's a, well, I'll let him tell you. Um, he, he's, he sent it in and Elaine received it. And um, she responded that there's no openings currently, but uh, come, come May, there may or may not be. Um, so we're, we're not in the appointment season yet and we don't have any vacancies. But uh, he's expressed interest, and and uh, why don't we let him tell you, tell tell us about yourself, Tom? How you doing? Uh, I'm, I'm Tom Jordan. I'm uh, obviously I've lived in Lunaburg since uh, 2004. We have a, a small horse farm on uh, Burridge Street. Uh, we used to have three horses. We're down to two. Uh, we moved out here because we wanted the community of farm living, and uh, we've enjoyed it ever since. And uh, I want to give back to the community. And this is the perfect opportunity is being in the Agriculture Commission. Excellent. Excellent. Well, we very much appreciate your, uh, your uh, interest. Mm -hmm. And as, as we said, there's, there isn't currently a vacancy, uh, but a couple items down on our new business is to discuss expanding from five to seven members. Possibility, um, and it's also a possibility that some members may not want to continue. Right. Um, we welcome we welcome everybody at our meetings. Um, so welcome and thank you. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. 
So uh, Mary Ray was pretty much heading up the flyer. So that's the next, that's the next item is review and approve flyer to <clears throat> advertise and promote the Agricultural Commission. Um, we had uh, spoken with a friend of Mary Ray's and it's going on about a year now, I think, that we started talking with them about putting together a, a, some sort of advertisement or flyer, something to promote ag in town in general. Um, there anybody with anything input news ideas I know, I know she's been super busy she moved her shop yeah um i know uh she's probably having 50 or 60 people at her shop tonight <laughs> so i haven't touched base to her about that at all but just the business side of things okay um yeah no the uh the, the pace of municipal government I've gotten used to it, unfortunately, but <laughs> yeah. Um, everybody's got lives, and especially the farmers. Um, so we'll uh, put that off. Um, so discussion of expanding from to seven members with two alternates. Um, we've mentioned it a few times. Um, the biggest downfall that I can see is that our quorum requirement would go from three to four. And we're already having issues. I mean, we've missed hmm, a good number of meetings in the recent past because we couldn't have a quorum. We didn't right. have. So that's the only downside of expanding. <clears throat> the um, the ways and means of doing it. I'm pretty sure we just go to the board of selectmen and ask. And I think it's would require a change of the charter i think i think the um i think the commission was in the charter i'm not sure but right a big deal and we certainly can find out um yeah we should work on just getting a bigger quorum of people for the five first <laughs> yeah seems, okay. to be, seems, seems to be lax on the attendance Sure. So I'll I'll put that on the ongoing items then instead of our new business. Mm -hmm. Um so then the discussion on existing regulations for farms and farming in Lunenburg is our last new business. And this started from that letter that we put together. Um and I did send it out in May. Um in fact I have it open here. I sent it out on May 18th of 2021. So it's been almost a year and I still have not heard from anyone on it. Shocking. <laughs> so I sent it to the building commissioner, Kathy Como, the dog officer, the uh, animal control. Uh, Elaine Peterson is the executive administrator for the town manager and the board of selectmen, the select board. Andrea Schnepp is our uh, administrator at the board of health. Tom Alonzo was the chair of the select board. George Eman is the chair of the Board of Health. Tom Gamble is uh, the chief of police. And mm -hmm. Heather Mew is our town manager. So those eight people received that letter. And um, crickets. But everybody is busy. So maybe we'll just follow up. But yeah. back to the agenda item is discussion on existing regulations for farms, farming in Lunenburg. Um, we had a decent discussion of conversations I had with Andrea and um, I don't know, no, I didn't have a conversation with the dog off with the animal control. Um, but basically the understanding that I had with Andrea was that um, there aren't specific regulations aside from the right to farm which allows the activity of farming um, and protects people ability to do that on their property regardless of the size um, versus having a farm which has the acreage requirements and you can get into chapter and and you get relief from zoning in some manner um, and that also came up from an email I'd received from a resident 
about questions geared towards what are the regulations for barns and um, it, it didn't sound like they were interested in the regulations. They looked like they were trying to get something to complain about. But either, regardless, I replied with, with all the information that I had available to me. <clears throat> and it, this is after I confirmed that with Andrea. But so that's it. Um, any new information on regulations for farms? Mm -hmm. No. Didn't we have a, a manure complaint? a little while ago it was on harbor street i think mary ray brought that one up too didn't she steph that was um manure too close to the property line i think oh that's right and yeah and then and i think the uh con conservation was involved as well or or yeah involved yeah i don't i, I haven't, haven't I, I haven't i haven't heard a follow-up at all but i think it was um Hope those can you be to the property line? Good question. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't I don't know. So yeah, so the, the discussion I remember having last time about this was that um, if, if you're stabling horses and you've got a specific number, a threshold that I don't know what it, I think it might be five. Yeah. Okay. You're required to have, no, do you know about this, Tom? Uh, Sharon knows more about it than I do, but uh, we did fill out all the paperwork when we actually, you know, brought, brought our horses home. And we, and, uh, we had no issues. I mean, we're, we're a couple hundred feet from the property line where we keep our pile. Anyway, I was just curious uh, what the law states now. Okay. Um, well, you're not stabling, so I, I don't think, um, but, well, I, I, I speaking for you. Abling other people's horses or just your own animals? No, no, just one horse, just ours. Like yeah, this. so I don't think, like I said, I don't think the manure management plan kicks in until you've got five or more horses. Um, oh, okay. That's why we never had any issues. Yeah. Um, so <clears throat> aside from the, the phosphorus loading for people who spread cow manure on five acres or more, I'm not aware of any other regulation specific to that. Um, mm -hmm. All right, so I guess that rounds out our new business. Ongoing items, um, they really haven't changed much in probably six months. We haven't really met much in the last six months though. Uh, yeah. The social media, um, we're still we're still hashing back and forth on that. Um, we've got Rutland's example. Yeah, uh, that one's good. Yeah, and then um, you know, I I really do think that um, to to take Rutland's example, I think we should find a way to get uh, friends of the Agricultural Commission, uh, which would be need to be a nonprofit, and and that that nonprofit could potentially handle the affairs for the Agricultural Commission, especially since we don't have any administrative uh, from town. I mean, we're, we're just five members and two alternates and that's it. We don't have an administrator. We don't have a, a board clerk. We don't have a, a budget item, budget line, um, nothing. Hmm. All right. Hey, Mike. Hey, so I have some information. If um, we can do it now or we can wait to the end, I don't care. Oh, sure. No, we we're just talking about social media. Oh, okay. So um, I got in touch with Shanina. She sent me um, what she was thinking, and I'll just read it, if that's okay. Okay. You want uh, okay. The, whole, the whole thing or just changes? Um, well, these are just changes. Okay. So basically the, the guidelines from the previous applications, like the waivers, insurance, the permits, all that, that stays. What she's thinking is shortening the season significantly. Uh, let me just read it before anyone says it. So um, every other Sunday, starting July 10th, dates 710, 724, 731, 814, 828, 911, and 925. 
Showing the season issues with crops, vendor availability, as well as, well as customer appearances. After the 22 season, we'll reevaluate pay as you go, $10. Uh, need to notify of attendance by Tuesday at 11.59, five days prior to the time that you'd be coming. Limit crafter space to focus more on what farmer, farmers markets um, are truly designed for. Payment provided directly to AgCom chair. So it's out of the mar market manager's hands. Um, and, and that was it, that's what she had written down. Okay. So we, we didn't talk, it's just the document she just sent me. So that's, so she's looking at shortening it significantly every other, um, every other week, but starting in July. Um, getting more crops for, you know, more crops will be available and also um, maybe prevent customer fatigue kind of coming every week and seeing the same old thing and breaking the bus. So I think that's what she's probably thinking. So it's very different from what we've done in the past, but I'm just, um, these are just her ideas. Hmm. Pay as you go seems like a good idea. I like that. Yeah, I guess it would be collected that when people show up, and then yeah. So would that that would effectively eliminate the the per diem or the? I'm not quite sure. So it would it would it would eliminate there would be no full season because you you would have you'd notify every week that you'd be coming, um, just to check in, and um, so it would basically be all per diem. Potentially, some people would be coming every every time that the market um, we have a market, but um, yeah, we'd be per diem, and everyone would notif notify by Tuesday that they'd be there the next week, and so there'd be five days notice, so there'd be time for um, putting that on social media of who would be there and all that. Have you discussed maybe talking to other communities and uh, having a partnership? Yeah, uh, we, no, we never had. Well, mm -hmm. the, the AgCom, we've talked about potentially uh, working together with other communities because uh, in the past couple of years, there's been a, a good number of drop offs that, that had markets and don't have markets anymore. Um, I remember we had a discussion about getting a group of vendors that could potentially go uh, every day of the week to a different market, and and that might some kind of a facilitator between the different towns that's been mentioned. Um, and I was actually thinking about Shirley because they are right next door to us and, and if they're not going to have it, then that would give us two or three extra vendors and, and it would give our vendors another day. Um, you know, with Shirley, we had the prime spot right across from the depot, right on the main strip. Uh, people coming off the commuter rails, literally, we see them get off the train, go into their cars and just drive away. And it yeah. was just very disappointing. Hmm. Well, I, I think I think that the every other Sunday would be would be I think that we'd lose. Well, I, I can see that we might lose attendance because if it's every Sunday, it's people don't have to remember, was it this one or next one? Um, and that's the only thought that I had on that. Um, for the customers? For the customers, right. Yeah, yeah. And, the, you know, there might be vendors that want a, a weekly gig just because, you know, the people are doing it for the money, too. Um, and I'm not sure if that would affect the vendors that we could get because they wouldn't, they'd have to fill in those spots on the alternate weeks. Um, but I, I get it. I mean, we... We kind of reduced it in Shirley last year as we were going through the season because we would literally have three hours, three people show up and not buy anything, just kind of walk through. So I get the whole, you know, if you you don't have it there every week, um, but you're right, it might be confusing for people which weeks are, are happening. And God forbid you have a rain date, right? We had, I think, two last year. Yeah, so I'm just reporting which what what Shanina was thinking. So um, what are your thoughts? Well, I'll tell you, <clears throat> excuse me, honestly, um, and again, I'm just one person, so anybody can feel free to disagree, but um, I'm just 
thankful that we have somebody that's willing to manage the market for the season. And if this is what she thinks is going to work best for her and the market, then I'm kind of inclined to, to agree with it. Um, how you guys feel about it? I guess it? we could send out an email to all the vendors from previous years and just say, what does this sound? Was this, would this be something you would do? Right, is, to kind of get is she play, is she gonna attend, is she gonna be here later or is, it, is she just not gonna? Oh, you muted. You muted. It doesn't appear that she will be. So it, um, I just got the document sent to me. I didn't. We didn't speak. All right. Yeah. I mean, I I agree with Matt. I mean, this is how she wants to run it. That's fine. I wouldn't. I wouldn't want her to run it in a way she doesn't want to run it. <laughs> right. Exactly. Um, that's that's <laughs> and aren't they what's the plans for the park there um with the conceptual design and school street the old primary yeah like i saw like they're gonna want to tear down and renditions of a market square or something going on there i, I think they got two conceptual plans they gave, they gave another architect more money to do some more studies and now we've got two options, I think. I'm not sure. I didn't watch the yeah. meeting. Um, but I have heard that, that the, they come up with two options. Hmm. I have heard AGCOM mentioned in the discussions um, because we had expressed interest in that building, but the interest that we had expressed wasn't moving from where we are to that building. It hmm. was staying where we are and using that building. haven't been involved yeah here are you still with us i am i'm just doing i'm out and about excellent feeding the ducks so do you how, how do you feel about the the market well i'm not gonna lie i've never gone to a single one but i do work on sundays from nine to two and it's done by the time i'm out of work um but if i was a shopper trying to buy local and like trying to buy like you know some produce for the week or meat for the week or something i'm gonna want to go weekly because it's not gonna last me every other week so then i might go to a different one that's weekly that's dependable um in my opinion as a shopper um but i've never gone to one so i feel like i'm a bad Ludenberg resident. No, no, no. No shaming here. You need to have them later on a Sunday. Should be later on a Sunday. Well, I've noticed at my work, because we're open till two on Sunday, no one comes till afternoon. I think people are slow to start the day. So maybe you'd have more business if it did start later in the day. No, <laughs> we uh, no. we were we were later, and it, it, the reason we changed it to earlier and dropping off is it literally just dropped off the last hour. No one was showing up. We we're kind of getting people as they're out and about after church or going out for breakfast and things like that. Plus, the vendors, if you're kind of in the middle of the day, you really can't get it. Your, your Sunday shot, you can't yeah. get any yard work done in the morning, and you know, get home. It's it's three thirty. Um, so yeah, we really gave it a lot of thought, and. Um, we weren't just slow. I mean, our mornings used to be packed. Um, and there were some vendors that they would sell out of everything early mm -hmm. and still just kind of hang around. And it was just a very different year last year. I'm not sure uh, why. And it was talking to other market managers and was hearing the same thing. But yeah, I get, you, I get the point about if, you, if you're really looking for the fresh produce, you want to get it every week. It makes yeah, sense. I mean, like, it doesn't last that long. So if you want to, like, buy mm -hmm. local for the week for your meals, you want to do it. It's not going to last you two weeks. It's barely going right. to last you a week. And right. you're going to have to supplement somewhere else. And if there's another market on Sunday you could go to that's every week, probably you're just going to go to that one every week. Yeah, so makes sense. I think it might hurt business more than gain it. Well, um tell you the, the market has not been more successful than it has been under the management of, of Michael and Shanina um, and 
Thank you very much for that. Um, and remember <laughs> all the shields and the, the fencing and the the one way traffic that we had to organize. Oh God. Mm. Um, <laughs> But I remember the first year that I attended the market. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't, uh, we didn't have many vendors, but I think, what did we have a, was our record number 22 vendors that we were running every week? That was, that was pretty sweet. 24 or five. One. Yeah. But yeah, no, we've had, doing the minutes, I remember the last, in 21, we had uh, three consecutive of 19 um, for that, for that meeting. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean, we've had we've had good uh, good vendor turnout and um, good people turnout, and they're not always the same time, unfortunately. But it, nobody's got a crystal ball, and this is something that I think that the people that are going to markets are going to be looking for now rather than later. Um, we could put it off till next month, to the next meeting. We could schedule a special meeting. Um, but there, um, and, and I, I'm sure we could figure out how to get what she's thinking in, in our hands so that we can present it on the screen, um, or distribute it. Um, ideally it'd be nice to have her here to explain it, but, um, I think, so what do you think it's going to do for the vendors if we wait till next month to have that available, Mike? I think um, in a couple of weeks, they'll start emailing saying, hey, when are we getting an application? What's going on? But I, I think they'll, um, they're will they expecting the market to run. I don't think anyone isn't expecting it to, to run, not run. I think if some of them may be shocked about the, um, the limited time and, and number of, so I'm not sure if that will turn anyone off. Um, um, but I get it with the vegetables. You know, we don't, the, when we started in May, there wasn't much other than flowers, cut flowers. Um, but if, if someone want, has something that they're selling from, you know, like a honey guy, right? Um, he can sell year round. He's probably going to want something more regular in a longer season. But as you already said, um, you know, she's offered to step up to the plate and, and see what it looks like this year for a year and reevaluate. Yeah, so I don't, I think, but we can also email people and say, you know, just the list of people from last year, how many people would participate on a, in a schedule like this and, and see what they have to say. And then if the feedback is negative, reevaluate. Okay. I'm good with that. Um, yeah, I'm good with that. So <laughs> how about we put off till next meeting officiating anything and we, um, and this is group and we give we give you and Shanina permission to and you don't even need our permission because you guys are not subject to open meeting law and, and they're your vendors that you brought in anyway but why don't you guys poll whoever you can between now and the next meeting and then we can we can officiate something with that feedback okay Does that sound and and at the same time you can you can assure them that there will be a market okay so yeah, so in, in the email, we'll say, you know, there's definitely going to be a market. This is the schedule we're looking at. How many people um, will definitely participate in it? Um, and then we'll give you those statistics. And then we'll have whatever documents need to be approved, application, everything ready to go. So literally the day or the evening after the, the ADCOM meeting, it can go out. Okay, perfect. Sure. And, and as well, if, if they're going to respond to the Lunenburg to the farmers market at lunenburgonline.com that goes to me and i can i can i can put all the responses together uh without violating open meeting law and distribute it to the members prior to the meeting so that everybody has that okay. all right that sounds good I'm good Does that sound I, I, good? yeah i'll share all that with Janina. And I'm not, I'm not putting you out, Michael, for that? Oh, um, no. Okay, great. No, I'll, I'll share that with her. It sounds good. sounds fair. And then um, if we get, if the feedback is negative, we'll probably come back to you with a different plan. Um, maybe 
keep the season the same length, but maybe uh, more frequent um, days or something like it, whatever she's thinking. Okay. And we'll, we'll use the feedback to make a change if we need to, and then bring it to you at the next meeting. Super. And, and just like previous years, I, I, I will plan on being there at every time the market is held. Um, so if uh, Shanina, if, if it's a, if it's a time commitment for Shanina, then, and if the vendors don't want to go every other, then it's possible that I could just be there every other, and, or that she could be there every other, and, and I would handle whatever needed to be done. Okay. Oh, we can still we can still look for other people to help as well. Right. Right. That sounds good. All right. Great. Ryan. Ryan, that sounds yeah. good. No. Yeah, yeah. I like it. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Well. Um, I guess. Good. I'm going to grade some papers. So uh, we'll we'll see you all next time. Thank okay, you, Mike. Mike. Good. Good seeing you. I nice seen you. Thank you for the good and the bad news, and we'll we'll very much miss you. Thank you. All right. So picking up where we left off, um, social media. Do we have any new thoughts, ideas, comments on social media? Uh, no, that was more Mary Ray's kind of. Yeah. Um, all right. Community gardens. That was you. Yeah, I haven't I haven't heard, and I emailed him again, and I haven't heard back. Yeah, okay. I know. Uh, Showing Farms just got uh, a grant for fifty thousand dollars for some, you know, uh, COVID. I think for lower than lower tourism or something. Yeah, what? it's actually like a, like a grant from the state because of the low tourism because of oh, okay uh, COVID. Well I mean, it was 50 grand. I, mean, I don't know how they, uh, I don't know what the algorithm was for that. Just lower Apple sales or something. I don't know. So that I know that, that they gave out way more than they should have, and they're trying to claw it back, supposedly. Probably. Yeah. Um, so farm inspections is on there. Hmm. Um, hats, t-shirts, bags, marketing. That was Jorge. So bylaw references to farm size. Nothing new there. Um, the AgCom holding land <clears throat> as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> also nothing new there. Um, and then the map of Lunenburg Farms. Uh, has anybody been able to confirm or deny any other farms that we didn't have before? Mm, I don't think so. I, 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 know, know, we didn't, I know we didn't lose any. <laughs> um, no, actually, well, Maplecrest is gone. The Janine Doucette, that she was, <clears throat> she was our manager for a couple months at the market. Yeah. Um, but I think, I, I think at this point we lose one or two when we gain two or three, because as we've seen the new, the new, um, the new wave is people doing more with less land. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, hopefully it, at least that way, um, they're building eight new houses in the orchard across my mom's. <laughs> Oh, fun. Yeah. Um, so that's it. And so Map of Lunenburg Farms, I, I, I remember we had talked about uh, splitting up the list before, but I don't think, I think we might have missed a meeting or two after that, and it just kind of fell in between the cracks. Um, but we all know who they are, and um, I know a lot of stuff from a lot of people that I can't repeat here in an open meeting. Uh, yeah. And that's, that, that's why we do this stuff privately one-on-one -on -one before we advertise. Yeah. Uh, and I'll just I'll remind everybody again of um, the Stillman and the Poopa Palooza. They weren't very mm -hmm. happy. Oh, yeah. So, um, learn from our mistakes. 
So that rounds out our ongoing business and we're full circle back to public comment, open discussion. We should, uh, I was thinking maybe we should send out like a group text about people attend, like maybe the Wednesday before our meetings, just to, like a reminder and just get like an affirmative for who's going to attend and who can't attend. Yep. I would love a reminder because I don't know what day of the week it is ninety percent of the time. Just okay. Like a, just like an informative, please respond, yay or nay, if you're able to attend. I mean, it's always been the third Thursday of every month, but yes, they sneak up. I'm telling you. And as soon as spring and summer come it's usually hay time so. yeah hey, Matt, right. uh, uh, Sharon's here she would like to ask a question also is that, is that a possible oh sure more public comment yep public comments public comment. <laughs> hi Matt hi everyone hi um, so uh, what is the status of the town's open space plan and farms oh my so there's no there, was, there was a big question, right? <laughs> so, no, so I'm, I'm glad you asked because uh, this is going to be coming up on our master planning discussions at planning board. Um, okay. it, it certainly does impact uh, agriculture and farms in Lunenburg. The, um, the open space subcommittee uh, updated our open space plan very recently, uh, not, maybe last year, maybe the year before. Uh, it's a 260 something page, I believe, uh, document, and it is filled with really good resources. A lot of uh, time and effort went into the plans, and um, Brandon Kibbe, uh, I think he stepped down. Here, but he, he had, down. Uh, he, well, I, I, I'm not sure. I think he's still a member, but he did he um, time commitments and and um, I think he stepped down from chair. Uh, okay, but the. The open space plan is something that's available on our town website. And I would encourage you to take a look at it. It's it's a lengthy document, uh, and it, and again, it has been updated in the last couple of years. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Certainly. So uh, there was some another part of that question. I thought. I just was wondering um, what the proposed uh, regulations and related to farms were, because when I was on the committee many years ago, there was a lot of discussion of what, about what is a farm. Okay. So in my mind, and some people think that's a scary place, but <laughs> a farm in my mind is, is, is any land that you own, that you practice the protected the, the, the farming activity, which is what's protected by the right to farm. Okay. So the, the activity is what's protected statewide and it doesn't have any requirement for land size. Um, and the questions also come up before specifically to Hickory Hills. Hickory Hills is a large landowners association and in their bylaws, they specifically state no livestock. Not even any chickens. That's well, where I Don't ask, don't tell kind of thing. <laughs> um, but technically they're not allowed. And, and the fact the fact that there's a state law and we've got a local bylaw of, of right to farm that doesn't affect their landowners association. Um, but anybody, anybody with the tiniest piece of land and a house that they own has the ability to farm it. Question came up at the Board of Selectmen many years ago when we tried first to reduce the. Okay, so so the other physical thing is a farm. It's a physical parcel, and that is 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 available for chapter. But there are specific circumstances you need to fulfill. You have to have a minimum of five acres plus right. your 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 zoned lot. And the Lunenburg bylaw clearly states that. So if you're 
If you're in residence A or B, I think is one acre zoning, you need six acres to qualify as a farm as a minimum. And if you're an outlying, you need seven because of the two acre. Um, and and that's, that's mostly for the tax break of the chapter program. Um, chapter 61, 61A, <clears throat> excuse me, 61A and 61B. So it's forestry, agriculture and recreation. Agriculture and the recreation have the five acre minimum, but if you want to get into forestry, it's got a 10 acre minimum. Okay. It was about farms. So the physical farm that that is there and then what's protected by the right to farm is the activity which can happen anywhere. Got it. Okay, well, thank you. I, I haven't read the regulations in a very long time. I'll, I'll revisit them. Okay, very good. Um, <clears throat> so, and I didn't, I didn't ask you guys, but we're supposed to state our name and a <clears throat> name and address when we. Oh. Sorry, uh, Sharon Jordan, 77 Bird Street. Okay, very good. And, and Tom Jordan, 77 Bird Street as well, I'm sure. Correct. We do live together. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. I live in the barn. She lives in the house. <laughs> My parents were the opposite. Yeah. <laughs> um, Thank you. All right. So is, are there any other public comments uh, for open discussion? Uh, no, I'm good. Okay. Kira, did you fall in the pond? No, I was at Hannaford's. You came <laughs> grocery shopping. Nice. Hey. I don't have a lot of spare time. <laughs> very good. Multitask. Good use of it. Multitask. Very good. So that, uh, that, Unless there's anything else, then we set our next uh, meeting date will be March, third Thursday in March, which is 17th again. Nice. March 17th. Um, is there a preference to Zoom versus in person? I prefer in person. What's it? Um, I like Zoom because I can do things, but either one. It's fine. Okay. Um, either one. So there was a conflict tonight, and I we almost well the town manager asked if she could if, ask if we could reschedule, and I said I had already submitted the agenda, and this is our regularly scheduled meeting time. So um, I assume that we would be able to post for the seventeenth. Um, for now, I think. Um, it might be a good idea to stay with the Zoom. Sure. Might be able to get um, Jorge. And has anybody ever spoken with Stephanie? I've seen her in many meetings. No. No. Okay. Um, all right. So March seventeenth, uh, we'll, the agenda will be posted on the town calendar, and uh, I will try to remember to send out a text. Yeah, just to get like an affirm, a yay or nay, so we can. That'd be good. All right. So I guess this is the time that we'd be looking for a um, motion to adjourn. I'll do a motion to adjourn. Okay. Uh, is there a second? I second. Is that allowed? Am I allowed? No, you're fine. Oh, you're, you're fulfilling our quorum requirement right now. So, yeah. Okay. Um, so it's going to have to be roll call vote. All in favor of adjourning at 8.01, Mr. Stober. Aye. Mullen. Aye. And an aye for myself. Thank you all very much for this production. Nice meeting you, Tom. Thank you. Nice meeting you, everyone. Hope to yep. see you soon. Very Will good. Do. Have a great night, all. You too. Amen. Take care.